Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Taurus here and in today's video I am bringing a highly requested tutorial. You all know I absolutely love doing eyeshadows. We plan an eyeshadow today. But everyone has always asked me to do a get ready with me showing off my things. You know, how do you do your foundation? How do you do this? And at first, I'm not gonna lie, when I first started doing it, they didn't get many views. And so I figured people didn't care about those, they care about the eyeshadow more, so that's what I'm gonna do. But the one thing I always get comments about is, oh my God, I wish I knew your tips, your tricks, and your technique. And honestly speaking, most things have not changed. The same tutorial and the same techniques that I have from two, three years ago are the same ones I have now. It's just, I may switch up, say, a concealer if I want to test that out or a foundation or anything. And today, I'm bringing you a foundation review because you all have been on it. You have been asking about it, and she finally here. And today, we are playing with the I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation by Juvia's Place. In case you all would like to know, I will start keeping, well, I've been doing it, but I will add Juvia's Place to the list. I always try to keep my shade match in the description bar below, just in case you all would like to know if you all are a match for me. And I'm gonna show you all step by step exactly how to achieve this look. We're gonna go through everything. Primer, we're gonna go through foundation, we're gonna do the eyes, we're gonna start off with a bare face. We won't even have eyelid primer on. So before we get started, I would like for you all to do two things for me. First, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, please, please, please leave me a comment down below because I believe this video will be going up on Thursday. And Thursday is my dear friend Janessa J. Champagne's birthday. And I want you all to please, please, please say happy birthday, Janessa. If you are all in the live chat, you can say it there. I'm not sure she's going to make it. But if not, would you mind please leaving the comment after the video goes off telling Janessa J. happy birthday. She's an amazing friend and I did not want to forget that. I wanted to make sure that this video is full of positivity, information, and excitement. I'm excited for Janessa. I'm excited for you all to get this. And I'm excited to show you all this look. So if you all would like to know my opinion on this foundation, you're going to have to wait to the end. But if you would like to know how to achieve this look, let's go ahead and get started. Because this foundation is rather new, I do still have the box. You know Juvia's Place always kills it with their packaging. It's rather simple, but I love how it gradiates. You know, the artwork is always beautiful, and I love how they have all different complexions on here, not just one tone. Also, if you would like to know your shade name, it can be found on the top of the box here with a sample size look of the color. My shade is 435 Punta Cana, and this is my perfect match. On the inside, we do have a plastic bottle. This bottle does contain a pump, which is the first time for their foundations, so I'm excited about that. On the back, you do have the name of the shade, but it does not have the number, so that's something you will want to remember. And it also emphasizes that this bottle needs to be shaken well, so I recommend shaking this before every use. Also, on the front, it does contain a sticker that lets us know we are getting a 30% bonus. You do get 40 milliliters instead of 30. I'm not sure if that's going to be their standard just to show that they're giving you more product than the industry or if this is just going to be temporary for the launch of the product, but I'm loving the extra product. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get things started. As with all tutorials, any and all tools and product shields will always be in the description bar below. So if I ever forget to mention anything, just check out there because it will be there. Um, not sure exactly how we're gonna go through this because baby, it has been quite a while since I've done a foundation routine. The reason it has been a while is because not much has changed. I promise you all, over 95% of the things I'm gonna do today is gonna be the same way I've done it for years. 
it's a method that works for me but I wanted to let you all know about every single step of the routine the only thing I've done so far off camera was re-moisturize it is later in the afternoon it is what about three o'clock 2:59. so oh, it just hit three o'clock so I did go back in and put some moisturizer on about 10 minutes ago I'll make sure I leave this in the description bar as well as some lip balm I always just like my skin to be hydrated before I get started and my first step as far as just actually like wearing makeup I like to do is going in and curling my lashes you can skip this step if you feel as if you don't like doing it but I find as if it just gives me a little extra boost and because I'm not someone who wears lash strips on a regular basis I find mascara just a little easier to put on and take off so we're gonna do that first gonna just go ahead get as close as I can to a couple pumps and then keep that moving and the main reason I like to curl my lashes first is because I don't want to get no product on my lash curler because we're gonna go in with eye primer I know today's uh, routine is all about the foundation so we're gonna do something soft and quick I do not want my eyes to compete with the face and I realized I've never tried out my Juvia's Place um, eye primer I got shades one and two. I believe I bought shade two by itself because I felt as if this would complement my complexion the most. But then I believe shade one came in a kit and I'm like, for those dramatic days, we're gonna get her going. But we really want to be careful today. I do not wanna do anything that's gonna risk messing up this lip because I've never used this primer. And what I'm not gonna do is let her mess it up. So I'm gonna put just the tiniest bit on the back of my, oh, she's a thin one. And make sure you shake this up rather well. I have not used her before, so she has separated a little bit, but we're not gonna let that slow down nothing. I'm gonna take some of this on the back of my hand. Where's my mirror? Okay, I'm gonna pick some of this up on a brush and we're just gonna see what kind of coverage she provides. My skin is already nice and hydrated, and I like to go in with a very light amount of primer first and see how well she builds. And you can see this color looks really nice against my complexion, shade number two. She's given a lot of coverage. I don't even think I would need to go up to shade number one unless I really want to be dramatic. But I think I could possibly mix those two. So I'll just be right back. And I wanted to see if that would build up to full coverage, which she did. So now we're just going to set things with some trans no, some loose colorless powder, not translucent powder. I usually keep some in a small bowl here because I'm not the biggest fan of double dipping into that container. It looks like a salt shaker if you've all ever seen it. Not a salt shaker, a pepper shaker. So we're just gonna go ahead, make sure we grab some powder on this brush, but I wanna make sure first we don't have any creasing or anything because I do have hooded lids and product can settle. It doesn't appear that anything has. And it looks like this is actually starting to dry down on its own, which is a good thing. But just to make sure, I like to set things with some powder. My main areas of focus is the crease and slightly above that because that's where I'm going to blend my mats. Although I like my lids to be set, it's not really as important as getting the crease area for me. But because we're going to keep it simple and we may do an all matte look, I'm going to go ahead and set everything. Then I'm just going to dust off any excess powder. I don't want anything left over. Just just make sure that blending is going to be a lot easier later on. And for eyeshadow today, because we're already using Juvia's Place, I figured we could go ahead and use the coffee shop. I first tried this palette out in 2022. Baby, you got to check that tutorial out right there. This is easily one of my top five view for the year. And so I figured why not bring her back again? Look at her. Like she's stunning, she's beautiful, but I want to make sure I'm not doing too much today. We want to keep her simple. So I'm gonna start off, we're gonna go up to here, shade number six, and we're gonna use that as a transition shade. We're just gonna buff her out, large fluffy brush, nothing dramatic, honey, just get her going. Now we're gonna take just the slightly smaller blending brush, go into shade number one, deepen up the crease and put that all over the lid.
as you can see, no time for nothing dramatic, honey. We don't want the eyes to take over. We just want them to be done. And so now it's time for a face primer. Right after this, I like to jump straight into that to make sure everything afterwards is going to be laid and slayed. And I know I should have pulled this out before we got started, but it's sitting right here in this drawer. So, same basic duo that I've been using for years. The thing is, I think I am gonna update after this bottle is gone. Any backups I have, I will be giving away. This is the Becca Evermatte. And the reason why I think I'm going to be giving this away is because one, it's going to take months to finish this. And two, I believe the makeup company J. La Rue has come out with what is considered a dupe for this product. And if there's something new and fresh on the market that you all can get as well, I would rather get that than to get, you know, keep using a product that's discontinued from a brand we no longer have. So I just like to take a pea size amount of this and we're going to take this and use this on the sides of the nose. This is a mattifier and I get the absolute oiliest on the sides of my nose. And I like to do this with a finger that does not have a nail so it doesn't scrape that back off. And I like to keep this just right here on the sides of the nose, right in the hollows. I'm gonna just give this literally a few more seconds to dry. Just don't want that to uh, move or anything. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but for all over the face, we're gonna go with the Maybelline, what is this, Master Prime and 100 Blurring Smooth. I go through primer more than any other makeup product of all time. And with that being said, I like my primers to be real cheap, honey. She cheap, she effective, and so we're gonna get her going. I usually load the fingers up, baby, get her going. Oh, I got a little bit stuck in between there. We want all of that. And we're just gonna pull this back and just dab and press her ear. I really like to make sure I get a nice little amount right there underneath the eyes because that's where we can get creasing the most. And right here around the nose, I just like to press to make sure we don't lose that ever mat underneath. I don't want that to be moved. For the beard, I really like to press in first. And then for the neck, I just go ahead and swipe down to make sure I remove all product off the fingers. Underneath the eyes, we're gonna make sure we really press, go back and forth. Make sure there is not an area that does not have eye primer. I do the same thing with my moisturizer. I like to go in and do like two layers underneath the eyes, even if I only do one everywhere else, because underneath the eyes is the spot that's gonna tell on you the most, baby. Spread this up all the way up into the hairline. I don't have baby hairs or anything, so I'm never worried about those. And now it's time for the star of the show, the girl you all came to see, this bad boy here. This is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. It says to shake her up, so let me make sure I give her real, real good shake. I am wearing the shade 435 Punta Cana. Make sure we get some of this on the back of our hand. And that's one, two pumps. We're gonna see what kind of coverage we get with two pumps. And I want you all to see this shade match. Because baby, when I tell y'all, I've used this in at least two other tutorials. I'll make sure I leave those linked above. It was the My Minka palette as well as the Surge palette. My Minka, it was too light. Surge, it was just a little too yellow. But look at this today. I'm gonna take this, spot this all over, just so I can get some of this off, but watch this. Look at the color right here. See that shade there? At first I was looking at it like, mm -hmm. I don't know about that Torrance, but then watch this. I always like to go in, wipe off, as much off my fingers and things like that as I can onto the brush because the brush is going to absorb product regardless. But watch when I blend this bad boy out. And I did it like that to see how much coverage you can get from this because I'm a full coverage kind of girl. And my main concern on the cheek is always my five o'clock shadow. We're going to blend this up into the nose right here underneath the eye. And you see the kind of coverage 
you get this is just this one cheek look at the coverage look at the glow on the skin this is the side without it this is the side with it now when i tell you 430 was so so yellow i just figured there was no way i would ever be able to make that work no i'm not gonna lie no way i would ever be thoroughly satisfied with it because i would always have to make it work with this she comes off just a little more neutral she's still warm but what I'm loving about her is, if this is what you look like in the middle of winter, when my skin warms up just the tiniest bit in the summertime, because I wear my sunscreen, imagine how much better this is gonna match. But look at the coverage you get on this. I still haven't done my forehead yet. I still haven't done this side yet. But I'm like, okay, honey, this is the shade that I was looking for. 515 was way too light. And 430 was way too yellow, so 435 is what I'm looking for. So we're just going to keep on applying here because, baby, you all know I am looking for full coverage. And I like to take my brush and bounce it in place like a beauty blender, stamping it in to get the most coverage first. And then I just blend out any harsh lines or extra product. Because, baby, I like to cake it on. I like to bake it on. You ain't going to tell me I got on too much makeup because I'm not going to care. But I want to show you all with my technique, even though I like full coverage, baby, any foundations should still work for me because I feel as if, if you ain't going to work with my technique, it's not going to go. But I know if I can make this work, you all going to make it work because y'all don't wear as much makeup as me. And before we get to our forehead, because I can already see, baby, I be trying to complain that these braids is falling down, but I'm like, Torrance, you're not going to take care of your hair and then get mad that it's growing. So we're going to pin her up because I made sure I brought these in here for y'all today. So that way we can get this five head going and I have no issues. And my biggest concern, the baby, I got an acne scar right there because I had a fat old zit. So once we do forehead, you know, I'm going to be stippling over that to see what kind of coverage she going to give. Because that's always my determining factor on how much coverage do I have on the forehead is do you cover my acne scars? For the cheeks, I'm usually looking for that 5 o'clock shadow. And for neck, same thing. So I'll just go in here. Coming up the sides of the hairline. And I have an extremely low hairline. So usually I get product up in there, but I don't be worried about it. Because I'm like, once the hair come back down, ain't nobody going to see that. But I want to cover her up. And as you can tell, I am someone who tends to apply my foundation rather slow. For me, this gives the foundation time to dry down so I can see if it's going to oxidize. It also gives me time to truly blend things out because even though we've already did this side of the face about four or five times, I'm always going back and trying to eliminate brush strokes. And because I know I still have product on my finger, we're just going to try to wipe all of that off on the neck. Because I don't go all the way down the neck, I usually try not to dip my finger again. What I'm going to try to do is any product that I have left on the back of my hand, because I still have product from them two pumps, I just like to take and dip my brush straight into there once and then come down. I know if you are a naturally beautiful woman, you don't have to worry about doing all of this on the neck. But because I'm a man with a 5 o'clock shadow, I usually like to take my foundation and go like right up to the Adam's apple and then just blend out from there. I don't like to take it all the way down the neck because... I tend to wear t-shirts, things like that, and I don't want that on the color of my shirt. And I also feel as if it makes it easier to cover if I just stop at a certain point and then just blend down. So that way, it's not a harsh point of where my foundation stops and my true skin color starts. By stopping like right here and just diffusing that line, it gives a gradient effect because the darkest point for me is right here where my five o'clock shadow would be. But you can see the Adam's apple just slightly creates a shadow. So if you just blend just right to the shadow of the Adam's apple, you should be good from there. And you can see, baby, this is what she's looking like after everything is on. We did go in and use that entire two pumps. This right here was the eye primer. The foundation was here. And tell me, this is not glowy. Tell me she is not beautiful. 
They say she's radiant. I didn't check to see what kind of coverage they said she offers. I usually believe radiant usually only gives you about a medium, maybe buildable to trying to be full coverage. It's usually never my version of full coverage. But just based on what y'all see and what y'all watch me built up before your very eyes, you can tell that the average person would consider this full coverage because she hasn't completely erased my five o'clock shadow. I want to see if I can get a little closer. We can see like right here, she's peeking through a little bit on the forehead. I'm trying to see if I remember where that acne scar was. She's right here. I'm just trying to see if you all can see that there because this is in 4K. But you can see she blends, she builds, and she's not one of those foundations that stays tacky and wet the entire time and then you just have to worry about it because usually foundations like that i would have issues with brush strokes and i'm just completely going over everything constantly to make sure we don't have any issues and i'm not seeing any like watch this i could purposely take my brush over a spot and although in person i think i can see that even from conversation view you wouldn't be able to tell i just did that so baby she hold no yes ma'am all right, now we have to go in and add some features because although this foundation is beautiful, you can see that match is coming through. Many people wouldn't mind just setting this and going on. I'm dramatic, honey. I like to do the most. So first, we're going to go in with a little bit of concealer, honey. I need to make sure. I'm still trying to pan this thing. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to, but I'm here to let y'all know. Don't come for me and my 2016 techniques for doing makeup, baby. I know the way I do makeup is the way a lot of old school YouTubers still do it, which is how I learn. And honey, those methods ain't never gave up on me and I never gave up on them. I know a lot of people be saying, oh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to add all of that. I know, baby, but it's fun. Took me a whole dip of my Too Faced concealer here. I don't know why I didn't even use the Juvia's Place one, probably because I just told you I was trying to pan her. If I was using the Juvia's Place one, I would use the shade 18, but we didn't grab out of that. We got my Lemon Rain sponge from Colored Rain. We gonna hydrate her just a little bit because she's been sitting here. If I was off camera, I would use tap water, but because I'm on camera, y'all know, we keep that Evian facial spray on deck because we bougie. Just gonna rehydrate her a little bit more. Squeeze that in, make sure she ain't just sitting on the surface, and let's get her going. I always like to start off blending out my concealer where I feel as if I need the least amount of coverage. Sponge is going to absorb product, and I don't need you taking that away from underneath the eye where I want the most. So I'm going to start from my chin, work my way up, and then we're going to go from there. I really don't need coverage on the chin. I'm just trying to get a highlighted effect. And my biggest thing is just not having harsh lines. I just like to blur it out because I'm still going to go on top with powder. We're also going to contour around that. So as long as she looked like that, where it looked like it could have potentially been a light that made that shine right there, we good. Same thing right here. I know most of the product going to get absorbed, but once you start blending her out, you see, okay, she moved out a little bit, spread the sponge a little bit to the left and right, diffuse that because that looked noticeable. That look a little less noticeable, so I'm good with that. Come up a little bit higher, then keep her moving. Same thing with the nose. Just want this to look slightly blurred. I bring it up. And because I have a big forehead, I usually don't like to take it too far. Once again, I usually like to stay below the halfway point with the forehead because I do not want shine and everything to be noticed that I have a big forehead but I want depth and dimension because nobody's skin is all one tone and one color all the way around. And you see, once I come up this way and get everything going, I don't want just a tiny little point where there's a lot of concealer at to be making marks all over. So once I come up, I bring the tip toward the middle and blend it out. So that way it's placing more concealer toward the center and less toward the outer end. That way I'm blending in now instead of blending out. I want the outside of my forehead to stay as dark as possible because right here where the center of my nose has been lifted and brought out, the center of my forehead has been done the same, 
I do not need the perimeter of my forehead to look no bigger than what it is. When blending out underneath the eyes, just because I'm right-handed, I like to do this last because I figure I can do that faster. I like to start off on the left side and I like to take my concealer because I know it's gonna absorb, blend toward the center first and then blend back out. I don't wanna take and start blending out and then have all my excess product out here when my dark circles are closer to the center. So we're going to bring that in, just pressing. And I don't want this to go no further than about halfway down the eyes. Going in and out. And you see, you just start off just trying to erase the line or whatever. You just don't want it harsh, but you realize, okay, I can still see it strong near the eye. Still strong out here. And you go back in a little less. This time, I don't mind coming down a little more just to erase that line. And when I come up underneath the eye, I always start lower than what I want it to be. Because if you start off high and clean up your eyeshadow too strongly, you may create a harsh line when you wanted a soft rounded look. So I always like to work my way up closer to the eye when I'm doing softer looks like this neutral brown. I don't want this to create a full wing liner. And it's just like that. You see how I still have more product that I could come up and clean that up and make it look a little easier. I mean, a little softer, but at least now I have the option. So I'm going to start coming in and blending up a little closer to the eye to clean up that eyeshadow. And I'm using that very tip of the brush because he has a lot of product and he can be more precise than any other part of the sponge. It takes a little more time to get this like this, but for such a small area, we want to do so. And now that we have that going, you notice underneath the eye looks extremely bright, but that color isn't being carried all the way down the cheek. I like to try to keep it, like I said, halfway at the nose. And then if you want, you can slowly start to blend it down. But if you take it all the way down here, the entire center of your face is going to look ashy and washed out and it's not going to look like your complexion. You can always come back in and add a little more. Like let's say if I just figure, okay, I want to be a little brighter. I just bring that down a little bit more. Around the edges. Soften up that mind. You want to take it a little at a time and then stop and look at it again. She looks even brighter now. But you notice how all of a sudden this side looks a little more stark than this side does. But I'm gonna show you how to clean that up. Now that we have everything highlighted, baby, as you can see, we are starting to get a little more depth and dimension to the face. I can move my face around and things look a little more realistic. It doesn't look quite as flat as it did before. But baby, that ain't enough for me. You know, I, I want this to last all day. I need this to look like a dial. So we have to go in and set things. And by set things, I mean baking. So for me to bake, I usually take this glass coaster. I think I found these at like Walmart. The reason why I like them is because glass is so easy to clean, but it has this slight lip on it. So whenever I have a brush and I put some powder in it and I press, I can even push my brush all the way up to the edge and not worry about my brush or the powder slipping over like it would on something like, let's say, I also love working with these metal trays, but with metal trays, I prefer liquids with these because liquids is only gonna push so far. Powder, I accidentally dust right over. But to set things, I have a mixture of powders inside of this. I'll let you know about that. It's the same mixture I've been using for years, honey. It'll be in the description bar, but it ain't nothing special. And because I want to save powder, because I used to just dump and keep going, tap some out on here. And we're just gonna use this brush here. She's just nice, fat, and she'll get the job done, baby. I, I don't even know if KVD still sells this brush, but I know I got it back up in case they don't. But before we set everything, you got to take your sponge and blend out any potential creasing or settling. For me, I'm 36, honey. So anything liquid I put underneath my eyes will eventually settle. You see that one line right there? She ain't going nowhere. It don't matter what I put there. So I always have to go back in and blend my concealer out just to make sure there's no settling there. 
because once you put your uh, powder down, baby, you're going to lock that in. And I don't want to lock in product that's bunched up together somewhere. So I like to just make sure she good. Grab me a little bit of mirror. And we're going to go in one more time while I can see it in this mirror just to make sure. I'm going to grab a powder and I like to set from the center first and work toward the back. I'm not worried about how much I put down because baby, I want it all. And then I'm going to set my entire highlighted area. Once I get underneath the eyes, the rest of the face can be done. But I want to get that done so that way I can go ahead and settle those muscles. Because baby, we all be making them weird faces and like, trying to make sure you stretch that skin out and make sure that powder go right up in there. And then with this too, you can use powder at this point to help clean up your eyeshadow. If you say pick up powder on one side of the brush, you can take that and use that and just press it down and use all of that excess powder as a filter to help soften up the edges of eyeshadow. So because I got all that powder right there, any color that would have been underneath that isn't going to be quite as vivid. And I'm going to take this all the way up to the sides of the nose, down and out and up toward the cheek because I want this to be baked. This is where I want the most highlighting going on. This is where I get the oiliest right here on the sides of my nose, so I want powder there. And baby, you can see how she went from looking nice, soft, radiant, to instantly looking flat and mad and ashy. But I'm going to show you how to fix that, honey, trust me. While we still have some product left on this brush, I'm just going to go ahead and do my chin here, because I really don't need much product for the chin. This is just going to make sure that area is set. can also... Then I like to take and turn my brush sideways, dip that in and get the cupid's bow. Go up the nose. Anywhere I added concealer, we're going to set this with this lighter tone powder. And then we're going to set right here in the middle of the forehead. So you want to just slightly work out to about halfway up the brow then just do a nice little circle around that only in about the center of the face we're going to knock all the excess powder off so right now I'm not really worried about how much we put down my main concern is just making sure none of these areas are still tacky everything has an excessive amount of powder and as you can see, things is looking a little dramatic right now. We have this powder resting here, but we don't have anything on the lower half. That part of the face still looks nice and radiant and dewy, but my oily skin not going to take that. So I have some more powder. It's basically the same 50-50 mixture. It's just a little darker, but I have some in this small container here. So we're going to pour that out onto the coaster. I like to use even less powder here. We're going to take this large, big, flat uh, kabuki brush. Well, she's more rounded, but she's almost flat. And we're just going to use this and press this into the rest of the face. I like to load my brush up to make sure she's coated. Tap off any excess powder because I only need the most minimum amount. And because these areas here don't get quite as oily, I'm just going to press this into place just to make sure she's set. And you can see how once I put this here, that looks way more mattified than the area in between. But we're gonna go up all the way and press this in just to make sure the entire face is set. You may have to dip back and forth many times to get the entire face depending on what size brush you use. But for these areas, I'm not really worried about baking. I just don't want the makeup to be sticky or transfer. For the forehead, same thing. I start in the middle, just press my way around the outer perimeters. I just want to make sure this area is set. 
And this powder is just slightly darker than the powder we used for the center of the forehead because I want this area of the face to come off slightly darker. Also want to sit underneath the neck. Don't want to forget that. Most important area for me is right here above Adam's apple because when I lay my neck down like this, it can potentially crease there. And we don't need makeup creasing right there. Hit the double chin and everything else, honey. Now, because my nose is the oiliest area of my face, when it comes to that area, I go ahead and load my brush up. I'm not really worried about tapping off any excess product, but what I will do is just take this brush, come up the sides, and just press that right into there while I have that excess product because I want to make sure my nose does not give me any issues with my oils breaking through later on. So I just really pack this on really heavily. I'm not necessarily trying to bake. I call this a heavy set, but if it gets to baking, that won't hurt my feelings. But I just want to make sure that there is no chance of the size of my nose not being set. Because if they don't get any powder, honey, this whole look gonna fall apart. All right, now you all can see things look flat and dry. We don't got that dewy glow that we had going on, but I promise you she's still under there. It's just this is part of the baking process. Once I get all that powder on for me, I used to be the type who could let it, you know, sit for up to a half an hour, baby. I could go eat, listen to music, do other things. It's not that serious no more. We're going to go back in and start removing things. And I like to remove things in the reverse position because I figure as if the highlighting powder needs a little more time and by removing that last, it'll get that. So I take that same brush that I use to add the powders, tap them off, make sure we don't have any excess powder onto them. And then we just reverse because I don't really feel as if I need much powder on my neck. I just slightly, you can either go in sweeping motions, you can go in buffing motions, whatever feel most comfortable for you. You just don't want to apply too much product and risk disturbing things. This is just about making sure there is no excess product. Powder. I was about to say powder. No excess powder on the skin. Do below the neck and chin first. Then we come up and do one side of the face. Start right here. Powder, powder lip. And I'm not trying to remove the highlighting powder from where I placed the concealer because this brush is darker than that. I'm just going to use this. Right here underneath the lip and the sides of the chin, because remember we put that lighter powder on the chin. Because the nose gets the oiliest, we're going to take that off last. Buff up and out around the hairline. You see I'm buffing out toward the hairline because I have that lighter powder in the center and I don't want to get this on there. And although we took that lighter powder all the way up here, I usually don't mind removing this part right here simply because it'll help it blend into my complexion a little easier later on. So we can take that off there. Then for the sides of the nose, I want to be very careful because I find that makeup is easiest to remove off the sides of my nose. So we're going to go in really slow and carefully into one swoop. Make sure she good. Touching on the other side. I don't want to do more than one swipe at a time. Because if I notice for any reason, product is starting to be disturbed, that process is over. Product is gone from there. And you can see, slowly but surely, she not looking quite as dry, but she is still looking set. Now we got to get that highlighting powder because she the one that's going to cause the most issues, baby, if we don't remove her. Tap my brush off. And just so you all know, I like to tap my brush on the fatty part of your arm right here to make sure you're not getting dents or anything. I used to love tapping mine off on the edge of a palette or like this glass or something like that. And you'd be like, not realizing you will cause dinks and marks and stuff on your brushes. You don't want to do that, honey. Use your arm. That way you only going to hit your arm so hard and you're not going to bruise yourself or damage your brush. Go remove this. Remember, because we want the eyes to have the most product and sit the longest, we're going to take that off last. Going to take the chin off first. Not much to worry about there. Keep it off. Chin. Oop, I said chin, baby. That is definitely the nose. 
Set it on the forehead. I'm just dusting off excess powder. Because we were baking. Anything that ain't set by now, baby, you just ain't going to be able to join the powder. Powder. Join the party, baby. What is up with my speech today? That let y'all know I'm excited to get this going. I think it's because I know I got a lab coming up for y'all later on. But it's like Torrance. That lab ain't till 7 o'clock. What else could it be? I got a secret, but I can't tell y'all. I've been talking to a brand and I got a product coming to me that I got a tutorial coming up for. But I can't tell y'all nothing about it till it get here. And I think that's what's still on my mind is that conversation that I had with that brand. But... We're going to start knocking this excess powder off. And I like you see, I'm starting down. And we're going to brush our way up until we get underneath the eye. When you get here, you can do either like this and just sweep out. You can sweep straight up like this. You can go back and forth. Whatever is easiest for you. But you just want to make sure you remove all this excess powder. I find that's what I like to do, go back and forth right here once I'm finally underneath the eye and make sure all that's gone. And you see what this side looks like with the powder removed compared to this side here where you can still see all that extra powder. Baby, bacon has made sure it locked it in, but it can look drying. And I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that too. All right, now I'm just sitting back looking like, okay, Torrance, you see, we, we got a complexion going. Things look a little more lifted, but this is definitely more matte than what we started off with. And to me, my face just looks fat and flat. So now it's time to add some depth and dimension. Contouring, baby, one of my favorite parts of makeup. I like to start off with my nose first, just because it's a small, tiny detail area. We're gonna get us just a basic, I like to use a synthetic shader brush. I'll make sure I list this in the description bar because I can't see the exact name of her. Maybe that lets you know when she well of when she don't have no name or nothing all the way around this brush like she should. My KVD Contour Powder. I personally find that contouring with creams give me a much more natural and softer look. But baby, contouring with powders give me that, that snatch detail. I can get it going. And this thing is raggedy, so I use this for the nose and the cupid's bow with this brush. Just going to cover my brush on all sides. And I first like to go in and do what I call creating harsh lines and then buffing them out because I want to see exactly what I have to do first. So I look at my nose in the mirror and what I do is look at where is the most bulbous part of it. I want to make sure I'm looking straight forward for you all. And I figure that's the tip. So I come looking up here where I see it's the thinnest and draw an imaginary line down. And once I get to the bulb, I keep that line going for real so this is where it would line up right here to link up with everything at the top and I do that on the same on the other side and then I come up here and then I draw the line again because this is where the bone for my nose comes in at because I because if my nose has like a slight snowman effect to it where the bone here it gets wide and then it sinks in slightly right here where I didn't draw anything. And then at the tip, it gets slightly wider. And by putting those lines there, it just helps me create a slimmer nose that matches what it naturally sinks into right here. I don't want, you know, everything to look like plastic surgery thin, but we want more depth and dimension. And if we're going to go in and get us a glam doll look, honey, might as well make sure we get everything snatched. And I'm going to go in and get some more powder because right now we're just creating all those features that we want. I like to take this right here at the bottom because I'm like, it needs to be a point where the nose starts and stops. So I put that at the bottom. I also do this underneath here because I need there to be more shadows and more depth and dimension going on. So the entire bottom of my nose has been carved. I also come up here where the nostrils sink in it and create a slightly deeper hollow there. So this is what we got so far. I know she looked wild, but then what we're gonna do is just take, make sure we tap off any and excess product out the brush. And I like to just go up the sides of the nose first because I'm gonna want that to be slightly darker anyway. And this helps remove excess product. Once we got that removed, what we're going to do is just start to buff in a circle. You 
you're trying to remove product out the brush and then we're trying to come in and slowly but surely come up to that line and diffuse her. I don't want to erase it, but what I can have is just that straight line right there on the face because nobody knows has that. So what I'm doing is going like up and down, left and right, doing circular motions, but I'm slowly but surely working closer to that harsh line to soften it. Once again, we just want to soften. We do not want to erase that line. And you see, I'm just sitting here going slowly but surely, going up on the line, coming down below it, going up to it, coming down below it, because I just want it to slightly diffuse itself. And this is what we have on this side so far. You see, it still looks strong where you can see I drew that there, but on this side, it looks a little more realistic to the point where where I turn my face, you don't quite see where that line starts and stops, but you can see it goes from being dark and looking sunken in so looking like my nose arches up, but on this side, it looks harsh, so we got to erase that. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Come over here. Buff that down and out because we want those lines to technically be there because from a distance, they'll create depth and shadows, but they can't be stark because then they'll be noticeable. And we're just going to buff everything out. I'm going to jump and do this on this side. You start below the line to make sure your brush is already in motion and then you just start to come up and diffuse it. Okay, now that you see we've gone ahead and diffused that, you can leave it just like this and everything will be good to go. You can just have what I consider to be a contoured nose and she'll give you everything you want. But you can go in and do this again as many times as you want and create more depth and dimension. The thing is, the more times you do it, the darker it's going to get, but the harder it's going to be to blend it and make it look much more realistic. By going in and doing it just once or twice, I've already created the image of a slightly slimmer nose because I buffed those lines out and I figured now is the time to leave things alone and jump to the Cupid's bow. Cupid's bow is the same thing, baby. We just want to create depth and dimension. So I've loaded my brush up. We're going to take off the excess. And I like to pinch this brush to get it as thin as possible because she's a synthetic shader. And what I want to do is because I have a natural cupid's bow, I love to define it because lips are my favorite part of the body. So what I do is take and create the thinnest line I can with this brush down the center of that area right here. Now, first, we got that there, but baby, that ain't gonna be cute by itself. We need some more definition. So I'm gonna go on the sides of that, like right here near the edge of my nostrils, and create a line on both sides, but I want this line to be slightly lighter than that one in the middle. Now, by doing this, you see I've instantly created what looked like two streaks or just like two highlights, two flashlights. But what that's going to do is create the look and lift of a higher lip and more depth and dimension for my cupid's bow. But just like before, we have to go in and buff that out. Just seeing two lines like that with well, three lines and two beams doesn't look natural. So we're going to turn our brush back to the wide way because we put that streak in going in thin. But to diffuse it, we're going to turn it the wide way like this and just diffuse it. Buffer out on both sides. By having it strong right here and then diffuse up and out to those, it's going to make this look much more realistic. And you're going to see how those two beams slowly but surely get thinner with time. I'll keep buffing. Let me make sure. And you see she looks slightly smaller, but it's like, okay, we can still diffuse that a little more by coming in and diffusing these lines from the side. That way it makes it look like my lips sunk in here, rose up for the cupid's bow, and then went back down. So just like with the size of the nose, I'm gonna buff and blend it up toward that to help soften that line because we don't want it to look harsh. And you see how on this side where I just blended out, it doesn't look as noticeable as it does on this side where it hasn't been blended out. We're going to go in and blend that out on that side too, baby.
And ta-da, honey. Now you can see whether I'm talking or not, even if I'm just sitting there stationary. That part looks highlighted, lifted. Cupid's bow looks tilted up because it's dark right there in the center. But we blended that out, and that ain't nobody's secret but ours. But, baby, ain't no point in just snatching that part of the face. Um, cheekbones, five head, double chin, all of that got to get done. So we're going to grab this big old contouring brush from Real Techniques. Because as you see, I've used her for so long. This brush hollowed out the middle and I, I don't got no product that I can grab. So we're going to grab that same product because I have another one here and another pen. And you can see she already created her a dip. So that's basically how my contour products go. I always use them until they get a full dip and then they just go strictly for the nose. But we're going to load our brush up. I want to make sure she's loaded on all sides. Tap off the excess, as you can see, she's covered. And now it's time to get these cheekbones. I like to hit that first, starting off having my brush lined up to the top of the ear. We wanna make it go toward the corner of the lip, but I like to stop like right here at the corner of the eye. So I'm gonna take it right here and I like to go just straight aiming for that. Boom, and I like to push it up into the uh, bone that I have right here. So wherever your cheekbone is, I like to push it up into it while I'm sliding. And right before I get to the edge of the eye, boom, stop. It's going to be a harsh line there. And right now that looks weird. But what I want to do is if I put it way down here, it'll make my cheek look huge and fat and all that. And because I'm getting older, I need my cheeks to still look lifted. So I need it to be right underneath the bone so that that bone actually looks like he protrudes out. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just up here, push it into that bone. You don't have to necessarily worry about them being even right now. If you feel as if, oh, that side got a little more, you can go back in and add it. But I just like to make sure I can see that I have the product there so it reminds me to blend that out. And we can always go back in and add more layers and things like that because I know I have a big old forehead. Most people can usually start right here on the sides. My biggest thing is because I'm not worried about how wide it is, I'm worried about how high it is. I start in the center and buff my way out toward the edges. And I'm just trying to empty off as much of that product as I can around the edges of my forehead because I want this to look as dark and sunken in as possible. I'm gonna dip my brush once again. I'm just tapping it one full time. I'm not going to tap that off. And then we're going to get this jawline. Just start it, push it right into the jaw. And then turn it all the way down and all the way around on both sides. Then we're going to take sides of the face right here up against the ear and push up against that same way. I want my face to look like it's sculpted all the way around. And most people can do that because I'm a dude and I have a stronger jawline. What I'm also gonna do is dip my brush and try to just basically, you see how this right here, it comes down and then it comes out. What we gonna do is slightly shave that off by putting some here and making it seem like I have a much more softer and feminine jawline than what I actually do. By shaving off that tiny corner there. And then to give our chin a little more prominence, because you see she still got some highlight from when we put that down. I'm going to go in and just right on the side, because we don't want that light to come out too far. Honestly, by slimming the chin down, it gives it a more feminine look as well. Then we're going to do the same thing at the top of it. Now, this is where it's time. You can, if you like, you can knock off your brush. But you see, we got all these harsh lines all over the face, and we need to diffuse them. Me personally, because I feel as if the cheeks is where I'm going to get most bang for my buck, that's where I like to start. But because we have so much product on our brush, I'm going to swirl it on the back of my hand first, and then come in. I like to start at the back. Small buffing motions, and I like to blend this up. I want the darkest part of the shadow to be at the bottom and then look like it's slightly diffusing toward the top because that's the way a real shadow and a real hollow and a cheekbone would be. 
So I'm just going back and forth in small circles. The largest end is facing up back this way. And I'm just trying to once again diffuse those lines. I do not want to erase them because we want that harsh area. I mean, we want that darker area to be there, but we just don't want harsh lines. And you can see with just doing nothing but going in those small circles, I've slightly created a hollow there. She's not the world's most realistic looking, but we still have other products to blend on top of her. So then what we want to do is once we figure, okay, that's about as blend as it's going to be, go slightly on top of it and diffuse that line too because we want it to look slightly like a transition. You don't want to be able to tell where it starts and stops. This is what we started off with where you can see that line and you can see what time she's slowly starting to diffuse on her own as she blend in. But we're going to go in and make sure she buffed out. Now we're going to go in and diffuse the forehead. On the sides, I don't mind just taking my brush and just sweeping back like this because remember we swept it just like this so the darkest part is already near the edge. I just once again don't want a harsh point. So we're going to slightly blend and buff it toward the center but we never want to take it too far. Usually I put my brush like this and remind myself it should never go past that point of the brush. So when I'm sweeping like this in my head I'm thinking okay don't take it too far. Same thing on the forehead, sweeping it back. I don't mind going in more than one time, but we want to make sure that each layer is blended before we added something else to it. And because I got a real big forehead, this could normally be enough, but I'm going to take my brush, dip one side of the brush in, tap off the excess, and we're going to go right back again over this part because this is the highest part of my forehead. You see how dark that is right there? I don't mind doing that because I know I can always take, go back in, go all the way across because I want the top of my forehead to look as small as I can get it. See, she look harsh right there, but then you're going to go back in, buff her out, sweep her, pull her straight to the back. Adding harsh lines isn't the problem. Not blending them out is. And now you can see when I look, sit straight forward, this part of my forehead stands out and scream at you. While because this side is darker, it slightly starts to recede. And so what you're focused on is right here in the center of the face. Time to go in and do our jawline. We already got those lines there. Just got to buff them out. You just go in the circles, working your way up. Main thing is I just want this to look like I have a sculpted jawline, like maybe I am young and youthful. My bones have not deteriorated yet, honey. Any facial fat I get is the ones that's supposed to be there. It ain't like I'm just lazy. And we're gonna buff this on the same way on the other side. Starting at the chin, small circles, just diffusing that line. Work your way up right here by the ear. I like to slightly buff that onto the ear because usually the ears are, for me, slightly lighter or darker than the rest of the face. And I also like to make sure I get a little foundation there when I'm doing this too to make sure that color all blends together. Once I'm through with all of that, any product that I have left over, I don't double dip that. I like to just go in and erase my double chin. Baby, if you ain't got one, Hey, be grateful I do. So what I like to do is just take this right here underneath the chin and I want y'all to see if y'all can sell this here and then just take and push that up and back and I like to just blend all this extra product here because I find that the chin area right here is slightly lighter than what our contour right here. So by pushing that back it creates a shadow and you can't see that that's hanging right there. So we're just going to push this right here. And I only like to do this with whatever product is left over because you do not want this to be too dark and then it can come start off looking like a five o'clock shadow. I just need that to recede just slightly. So when I sit back up like this, you see how all of a sudden my jawline and my chin looks snatched, baby. That don't look like a chin hanging. Yes, ma'am. Next up is blush and my favorite blush of all time. Get into her.
Serafina by Juvia's Place. I absolutely love her. I love NARS blushes. I collect them and you all know, I believe Orgasm by them is considered number one in the world. If you've tried Orgasm and you thought she not deep enough for me, try Serafina and see what you get because I love her. I always take me a nice big fluffy brush. I don't even be worried about it. I just dip her in here. I'm gonna tap her off and then I just swirl and get to going, baby. I go ham with blush every time. I love it. Before I got into eyeshadow, blush was my way of playing with color. And look at that. She gives just enough pink flush for me to be able to say I got her going. And you see, I like to start doing the same way I did my contour. I like to just put her on and buff her up and out, but I like to do it above the contour line that we have here. And I like to make sure that I keep enough space right here in between where I tell myself, Torrance, if for any reason you wanted to put on a second blush as a blush topper or anything, there's enough space in there for your brush to still fit right there and not cover that space. There needs to be something between the eye and the blush here. And because I'm a blush fiend, honey, I'm gonna go in and do one more layer just so y'all can see how beautiful, how pigmented, how gorgeous this blush is because on the days I don't do eyeshadow, normally I am doing blush. And I just like to keep it going. Just, she's just gorgeous to me. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now that we have blush on, it's time to soften and lighten things up. I am someone, because I have oily skin, I feel as if there can never be too many powders. And as you can see, we went in and did some dramatic contouring. I went in and created harsh lines. And although we buffed them out, I feel as if now we're at a point where I always go in and be like, okay, Torrance, your face looked a little dark because you went in and contoured everything. Time to brighten and add a glow. So what I like to do, because most face powders that are used to set the makeup are talc based. Talc is a very drying, it's a very mattifying product and it's perfect for setting your makeup. The thing is, I need to bring back that glow. I don't want everything to be, you know, just dry and flat looking. So I'm gonna pull back out my glass coaster here and we're gonna um, add a finishing powder. And for finishing powders, I love mica-based powders. Any powder that has mica as the first ingredient, I immediately think she's gonna bring a sheen to the skin, my skin won't look flat, and so I love to buff those on top of everything to help give me what I call a filtered look. My favorite one is the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Setting Powder. The thing is, I have mine in this jar here because when I first got into makeup, I started off learning with loose products. And so loose powders is what I'm comfortable with. It does compress, but I grinded mine up into loose form and put them in these jars. And so I'm just gonna take the smallest amount Oop, I even picked up way too much there. I want you to see like that is way too much, but I'm gonna take a very light brush. You want something nice and airy. This is the Wayne Goss airbrush. Just something that you feel comfortable with sweeping underneath the eyes with. And I'm just gonna take this brush and we're gonna buff into this powder. I want to make sure this brush is coated. And I have shade number one because this is gonna go directly underneath the eyes. I like to start with the lightest color necessary and then work my way out. You see this brush is coated on this side. What we're going to do is tap off that excess. And what I want to do is start it creating light and softening the look of things. So we're going to act like we're going in underneath the eyes with a baking powder. Start off there and sweep back and underneath like this. And this is going to create a lift and a brightness and a light right there underneath the eye. I'm going to take it down the sides of the nose. And I'm only going to keep it to right there to about the sides of the nose. And I'm going to bring this back. And right there on top of the blush, we're going to add that as well. And what this is going to do is start softening the look of the blush there. As you can see, by taking this and sweeping this up, it instantly gives me a brightening effect. But because it's mica and it creates a sheen, it does not look dry like the baking powder we have. This doesn't look like there's an, a whole ton of powder there because we only swept on a tiny amount. And so I like to get this all the way right there up underneath the brightening. This there. And bringing this up here. And this is just to 
to add a brightening effect and soften up the top of my blush. And look at that on this side compared to this side. All of a sudden, you see where things look dark and muddy over here because we've just been contouring, going in and making things darker, darker, darker with powders. Now all of a sudden, some of that brightness is coming back. And now that you all see that shade number one is light enough for an eye brightener, she's not gonna be able to go all over the face. So I'm gonna take that same powder in shade number two, which is gonna be best for my complexion. And we're gonna use a larger powder brush. I prefer one that's nice and wide so I can sweep product on, but she's rather thin when you look at her this way compared to this way. And so we're just gonna take this low product up on one side, just buffing into that powder. Once again, I have it on this tray here. I have it in loose form. If you have it still in press form, you could just tap once or twice. I don't wanna get off as much powder as we can because this is just to add a little bit of color. And what we're gonna do with this is use shade number two all over the face, except right there underneath the eyes where we did number two. So I'm gonna start right here with the cheek and by starting underneath the nose and sweeping over everything just slightly, what this is gonna do is one, add a glow to the skin. Because this color, I mean, this powder is slightly tinted, it's gonna filter out the color that we add underneath it. And I wanna do this on this side of the face as well. I wanna do one side of the face so you all can see the difference that this powder makes. I'm starting the center and just sweep backwards. And on one side of the nose, on the side of the lip, one side of the chin. And because this powder is mica based, as I said, it creates a sheen, and as you buff over it, that sheen intensifies. Of course, it's only going to be able to go so far, but by buffing this mica powder on top of things, I'm basically creating a filter because that shine is softening the look and like of things. And I want to show you all, get a little bit more just for the neck area, what this looks like with just shade number two on one side of the face. And you see how this side is nice, she's light, but you can see a stronger contrast between that brightening powder and then that blushing contour compared to this side where all of a sudden, because we have shade number two all over the cheek, the contrast between underneath the eye and the jawline isn't quite as strong. The uh, contour that we put here, although we put a little more on this side than this side, you notice how the contour on this side looks a little darker because she doesn't have this powder on top to help filter and soften up the look of things. So what we're gonna do is I'll be right back. I'm gonna finish doing uh, shade number two on the other side and then we're gonna show you how we're gonna apply shade number three. Okay, now that we're done with shade number two, this is where I go in with shade number three, if necessary, when necessary. Because shade number three is darker than my complexion, I have to be very careful, just like with my contour, or it'll take over. So what I do is I go in with the tiniest amount, like once I see any powder come down, baby. I'm not even sure if the camera is showing that it might look like a shadow of my finger. I don't play with shade number three because I don't wanna do too much and I make sure I go in after I use shade number two because there could still be product left here. We're going to go in, pick up whatever we sprinkled off from number three. Make sure we buff that in real good so that she mixed with number two. Tap off all excess. And my main areas that I want to get, one, the size of the nose. Because this powder is filtering, she's not going to look quite as dark. But she is going to go in and help set that contour work we did and make the size of the nose look slightly darker. And that's going to help create a much more realistic look for the nose later on. And look at that. Baby, same thing. We're right here around the forehead. I mean, yeah, the forehead. Normally I call it a five head. I'm surprised I just called it a forehead on camera. Make sure we soften that, make that look a little lower. And then I like to come in and just barely do the cheekbones. And any product we have left, the jaw and double chin. But I'll try my best to stay out of the inside of the face. I also like to get right here on the side of the neck too. Just to make sure that the outside looks thinner. I mean, the outside looks darker 
and the inside looks thinner so it'll give me a slightly thinner looking neck but with shade number three we don't like to play with her not for long not put her up get her going now it's like okay Torrance what step will we do next because we already have powder and stuff down I'm not worried about anything else from this point on as far as I'm concerned my complexion is here she's locked in all I have to do is spray her so we got to go back in and look at the little features the eyes the brows things like that have to be done and so it's like okay let's go ahead and get into her I like to go in and do mascara first simply because I figured that'll give it time to dry down while I work on other places so first I like to take my spoolie and where's that mirror and we're gonna just comb those through first I like to make sure because we've already done what foundation we've done concealer we've done powder contour all those things and product could get caught in your lashes and stuff like that and I don't want that to be the case so I like to brush them out first before I go in with mascara primer and I always tell everybody that because that could be one of the reasons why your mascara has clumped up so fast is if you baked or did eyeshadow and then you just went straight in that eyeshadow and that product could be clumping up your product. Comb those through as well. Let's just go ahead, comb through the brows. And for mascara, I'm the type who loves a good mascara primer. I know a lot of people don't like them. I was somebody who genuinely did not care for them until I tried the Chanel one. It was it was absolutely amazing. But my my budget, my pockets, the only two things I can afford from Chanel is their perfume and my best friend whose name is Chanel. After that, I'm going to have to wait a little bit. But this primer here from Lancome, she absolutely fabulous. And I love to get her going. So I like to just coat my lashes top and bottom. Same way you would do a mascara. And after I do my bottom lashes, I can usually get both of them with the bottom. I like to dip again and do the top. I like my mascara primer wand to be nice and soaked. And I like to roll it starting at the very base. You roll, hit it, go to the next spot. My main thing is always getting the base of your lashes first. Making sure those are coated and then coming back and hitting the tip. So after I done wrote it all the way up underneath, make sure that entire base is good. So when I coat it with mascara, it's already nice and thick. Then I can go in and just wiggle it back and forth along the edges of my lashes like this. Make sure you are coated. And by hitting the tips of the lashes, it lets me know just how long my lashes really are. Because I know a lot of people always tell me how beautiful and pretty my lashes are. The one thing is, growing up, I always thought it was something wrong or weird with them because I forgot what it's called, but my lashes do not have full pigmentation all the way through. The tips of my lashes are never as black as they are at the base. And so by shaking this like this across the top, it lets me see that my lashes really come way up here, even though they only appear to come about here. So then once I pull it back through, I know to pull all the way up and through to where I see those tips instead of where I would have falsely did it and not get my full uh, lash coated. And now we're just going to go in and fill in those spots between the base and the tips that we can see. And I like to use this to separate as well. Because ain't no point of letting it dry down with them hard and clumped together. And then trying to get a mascara to come through and pull that through later on. I know it seemed like a lot of work, but baby, by putting this in now, I don't have to go through lash strips. For mascara, I'm supposed to be finishing up this sample. This is the MAC and Extreme Dimension 3D. I'm telling you all, I have truly become in love with mascara samples. A lot of products you can buy full size and it doesn't matter because you can always come back to them later. I know I can buy a full size foundation today and if I don't want to use her for six months, I can come back in six months and she's still just as good as she was. Mascaras are one of those things, once you open them, it seems like the time, it just starts ticking, baby. And so, having a sample means I could go ahead and just use her for about a week or two and then she's gone and then I can test out something else and decide if I want a full size because I've been using the same Lancome Monster Big Mascara or the 
Which one is she? That drugstore one, the Essence Lash Princess, for so long that every time I test out a new mascara and like her, I'll be like, wait, when did you come out? Only to find out she's been out for about 10 years. But I'm going to take this and just comb her through. And honestly, I think by the end of the week, if not by the end of today, she'll be done. But I'm somebody who squeezes the life out of my mascara. And I like to do the bottom lashes first because I figure that's the one that I need to dry down. Because I don't need my eyes to start watering or anything. And I figure that if doing bottom lash materials causes more agitation and irritation than the top. So I like to do that first. And baby, she popped. Like look at how big and bold that is because we already have primer on. And because we made our under eyes so bright with that powder that just seeing those lashes there already give you a boom. Every time somebody see me with mascara, people love asking me like, what false lashes are you wearing? What individuals are those? Baby, she just time, energy, and effort. And a mascara primer. I'm going to do this on the other side. And then we're just going to go ahead and curl the top. Same thing. Starting at the base. Rolling that brush, making sure that base is completely coated so we know just how thick things are going to be, and then rocking that brush across the top so we know where they stop, and then brushing it through, honey. And if you separated your lashes already before the primer, it'll make it easier to get them coated now. I'm gonna have to dip again because, baby, this thing is being stingy with the mascara because I've been using a See, rock her across the top so I know where they stop. Baby, look at the way them lashes is popping on this side. Come through for your girl. No liner, no strips, no individuals, just mascara and primer, honey. And because this face does have an eye look, I usually love to do eyeliner with my eyeshadow. But once again... The eyeshadow is not supposed to be the focus of this look today. So instead of going in with a dark brown like Demolition, we're going to go in with a lighter brown called Whiskey because it's something where it gives just enough for me to notice that it's something on my eyes, but not so much to take over. And I'm just going to go ahead, line just the bottom. I'm not the biggest fan of a uh, wing liner. Because I genuinely feel as if once you put wing liner on any look, she's instantly the star of the look. I don't care if you're wearing 15 shades, a cut crease, strip lashes, dual chrome, a beaming highlighter, and, you know, spot brows. It seems like out of nowhere, that wing liner was like, hey, all y'all bag up. I'm going to start a show. Um, they all came to see me. And I just never liked that. Like, I can do them, but I figured if I'm going to take all the time, energy, and effort to put in a whole face look like this, I'm not going to let that one little tiny black strip come in and take over everything for me. So, I'm going to do this on the other side and be right back. Okay, baby, you see how that just gave my lower lash line just a little bit of drama, not too much? Now, we're going to just to make sure everything is good, take a Q-tip. And sweep this right underneath the uh, lashes. This is just to make sure no mascara has smeared. Make sure no eyeliner is there. And it makes the eyes look a little brighter. If you can catch that. And make sure you don't have no product there darkening up your under eye area. Boom. Now for brows. I have really thick, really long, really full brows. And most people usually only do two techniques with filling in their brows. Either trying to create shadows or trying to create actual brow hairs. And since 99% of us can't create realistic looking brow hairs, we go for the shadow. And I always try to tell people, less is more. Once you can notice a difference, usually you want to back up and let your hairs do the talking. And I've been trying to pan this because I think they've even reformulated or they don't even use this formula no more. This is the Lip Bars Quick Draw Pencil. She sort of looks like that ABH, um, I forgot which one it is, but that triangular looking one. We're going to just take this and we're going to fill in our brows. But all I want to do is just add a little definition to the bottom. I'm going to brush them straight up. 
And once I do that, it basically acts like a contour and gives me all the depth and dimension I need. I just want to fill in the slightest areas and give a shadow. I'm not trying to create actual brows. So by just going in and doing just that tiny amount, because my, my lid is clear. I have a very bright primer under it. It's like it's already been cleaned up. And I know a lot of people like to do brows first and then clean it up, but I figure as if that creates a much more harsher line. And because my brows are a little thin at the top right here, I don't mind putting a little up there as well. But that's it. I'm not trying to do all of that extra stuff, honey. I'm, mm -hmm. I spent all my time on my face. These brows don't get no attention for real. And then we're just going to brush that up with the spoolie to diffuse that line, just like with our contour. We don't want it to be erased, but she can't be strong because people notice harsh lines. That's why wing liners are so popular and so noticeable. And I always have to go in and tweeze the brow hairs right here because, baby, they will connect and create a big old halo brow for me. We'll brush this up just to erase that harsh line, but she ain't going to go nowhere. And to me, that's enough. You see how instantly she already looked thicker and darker and all we did was draw one line at the bottom to lock her in, ABH Clear Brow Gel. I normally would use a disposable because I have, let me pull those out. I keep disposables right here because I'm not the biggest fan of double dipping. But the thing is, this thing is about to run out. Thing is, this is almost so dry that she barely even pulls product out even when I put a disposable in there. So I'm gonna just use her straight out the tube and I just like to go straight in, brush her straight up just to make sure all hairs are a tin hut. And then go across the very top and just slightly brush them over so that they all line up at the top. I don't care how fluffy they look, I just don't want any hairs to be higher than the rest. That's it. Just brushing them up. They look weird. And you see how like right there in the front, that one piece is hanging up. You just take him and just get them down just a little bit. Okay, anything else? And the tail, get you down just a little bit. Because by leaving them sitting straight up, they'll help your brows look thicker. More hairs will come up and it'll look more realistic. And baby, that's all you can add. So we're going to bring her down just a tiny bit more right there. Okay, do that right there. And when it dries down, they'll dry down looking thick and fluffy like that when all we did was create this line at the bottom. We're going to have to let that go from there. Uh, lips, lips, lips. Lately, y'all know I've been loving this basic lip combo. I got to make sure I can find my pencil. There she go. This is the Straight Living Lip Pencil by The Lip Buy. You all know a common and popular trend in the black community for decades is a brown lip liner and a gloss. So we're going to go ahead and stick to that because I've been using that combo since day one. Going to just take this and line your lips. I am a fan of actually lining exactly where your lips are. And if need be, going just slightly outside of that. And I mean slightly outside of that. This is right here where my natural lip line is. And I like to go in thin because we're going to do more than one layer of this. So, got the top lip done. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom. And when I get to the outer ends, I like to just fill those in a little bit more. And you can see by drawing this in and hollowing out just that very corner right here, it creates the lip of a pouty lip because it makes it look like my lip is so full it hangs up and out. And at this part, it's just being stretched and can't hold on to all of it, baby. Got the filler-like look. And then most people like to go in and just take their lips rub them together and smear. The problem I have with that for me personally 
is with my top lip having a cupid's bow and my bottom lip not having one, I don't like my top lip to help smish all of that up and then create a rounded look on the top. I'm like, no, you're not erasing my cupid's bow. So I take me a synthetic smudger brush and do the same thing like we do with our contour. Buff the line up and out and then keep it moving from there. I like to start like right here at the center of the lip, buffing back and forth and get closer to the edge without actually erasing that lip. I gonna do like that. And I'm just trying to soften that line. I'm getting closer and closer to it as I move around. And I'll show y'all what she looked like on one side. And you can see how on this side, before she got blended out, you can still see exactly where I lined her. On this side, you can tell she's lying, but you don't see where it starts and stops. So you're going to do the same. And the thing is, with my top lip being much more pigmented and much more brown than my bottom lip, which does offer some pink, I usually find that I don't have as much space to do this on the top as I do on the bottom. And so I have to be very careful with how I move on the top. Now the line soften, and we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. You don't want to erase the line, you just want to soften it to create a slight ombre. And this is what we have here. I find that if you accidentally erase anything or want a little more definition, because my bottom lip is so large, I can usually go back in right here at the very center and add a little more. right there just to make sure it looks like a shadow and make it look like my lip is really large. Then this is where we gonna get, baby, baby. I don't do plumping glosses. I don't like them, but the one I have been loving and trying, thanks to a recommendation from August, I'll leave August's channel right here. The Fenty Glowing, y'all know, Fenty makes my favorite lip gloss. I love it. I normally don't double dip. So what we're going to do is take this first dip because this is my personal one. Go in and just try to get her right here near the center where we don't have that lip liner and just press her on right there. I want to try to get most of that product up and off off that one. Then dip it again. Get as much as we can and then take the second one and do the same on the bottom. Now that we have that off, then we can take our wine and just slightly move that product in the center of the lips and let it blot out. Because I don't want to transfer that dark color of that liner inside my tube. If this were a clear gloss, no way I would have tried that. And slowly just work your way out. It does not have to go all the way to the edge because with time and with conversation, it will slowly progress there. Hey baby, mm-hmm. I normally go for three dips, but because we talking, I only got two today. And you know what? Just because I said normally we do go for that third one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, look. Baby, lips are my favorite part of the body. And y'all see, I got some big old fat old DSLs, honey. They are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we got two steps left. And baby, why did I skip a step? Because before lips, highlighter. I love me some highlighter. I love me a glow and baby. I was supposed to do that before I did my lips because I like to highlight my cupid's bow. So we ain't gonna let that stop us. What we gonna do is grab my favorite way of highlighting, a fan brush. I love a glow, but with my oily skin, I need precision. I need to know exactly where I'm placing it. Mac O Darling, because I'm a fan of grinding up powders, I took that, grinded her up into a fine powder. But we're going to take this fan brush and we're just going to layer her first up. 
that nose. Y'all see we had already contoured her. We buffed it out and she slightly protrudes because we highlighted her there. So when we turn, she still looks realistic, but we want her to catch just a little more light. So we're going to take our highlighter right down the center. Ooh. And you see now she collects and gathers the light like no other. And I want to go in and do a little bit more because on camera, I like to be dramatic, honey. I can't be the plastic surgeon I wanted to be in real life, but with this makeup, baby, you ain't going to tell me I ain't Dr. 90210. Look at the way she shine now. Baby, I'm going to go in and get some more cheekbones. You want this to go right above the blush, but not quite fill in that area that we did with our number one powder. I like to do about halfway here and just buff and if need be, bring it down over the blush. We're just going to sit right here and beaming. Now my cheeks look lifted. They look high. They look sculpted and baby. We might have been fat and pudgy a few hours ago, but we got cheekbones like a supermodel now. Another area we highlighted was our chin. We're going to just take, add just the tiniest bit there, just because you see how instantly she catches the light a little more. So you have the highlighted concealer that brings it all the way out here, but then the highlighter catches it there. So it looks three dimensional because you got contour bringing it down. You got highlight bringing it here. It's just so much going on, it tricks the eye into thinking that's what's really going on. What's ever left on our brush, we want to take this, and although I'm not the biggest fan of highlighting my forehead because I feel as if it's large, we still want a glow to come from everywhere. So what I like to do is after I take my brush on the cheeks here, I like to take and slightly bring it up to the forehead. So I'm going to bring it from here and sweep it up, bam, just like that. So that way when I turn my head, I get a glow right here from the forehead and it wraps all the way around. So all the protruding areas of the face look like they catch the light. And then I take just a little bit right here above the arch of the brows, because even if for some reason, let's say I were to take off running and go to exercise or something like that, when I naturally sweat, I build up sweat right here. And so by having a little highlighter here to catch the light, it looks like my skin naturally is glistening in that area and it just looks more realistic. Last, even though I would have probably did this area first because I don't want to risk getting any gloss on it, we're going to go back in, load up our brush with a little highlighter and I'm going to just, mm, look at her, mm -hmm. I'm going to just take and just highlight the top of our cupid's bow just because I want that to shine. I may get some gloss on my brush, but we've already finished doing everywhere else, so. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because it just, you see how that highlighter is sitting there? Just take. Run a little gloss back over it to cover that line and still let her keep shining. That's how you do that. Now I'm sitting back like Torrance. Is there anything else you want to do? Simply because you all are here. Normally this is when I would just jump back in and like, okay, you all, now it's time to finish off the face. And I'm like, that's what we got to do. Finish off our lower lash line. So we're going to go back into those same shades. We're going to take a large pencil brush, shade number six, then a small pencil brush, shade number one. Make sure you get it to connect all the way up to the edge. You don't want there to be a gap there, but this isn't going to be too much. It's just enough to help round things off. And that's enough with that color. Smaller pencil brush for depth and dimension. You want to make sure this part definitely connects because she's the darker shade. And we don't want it to take over. We just want to add a little more smoke to the lower lash line just like on the top and you want this to be darker on the outer half than the inner half so if you can't get it to connect all the way to the inside do not feel bad we're gonna leave it just like that and I completely forgot I did not highlight anything normally I would use a shimmery face highlighter but in my last tutorial I used a matte one and I'm like we got to try that again. 
So to highlight my inner corners and my brows, we're just gonna go in with shade number four right here and finish things off. I like to do my inner corners first because I don't mind that being dramatic. Because this is matte, baby, she is gonna pop. Look at that, baby. Gonna show out each and every time. And then we're just gonna take what's left and just barely do underneath the brows because you can see she does not come to play. And I like my brows to be slayed because I remember a time when I never touched my brows. All right, you guys, I think that's everything. And you know, it's no point of putting in all this work unless we're gonna lock it in. So grab your sprays because you know I'm about to grab mine. Baby, let's get it in. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter, so things will last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. I'm going to give this a few more moments to dry and I'll be back to show you all the final look. And here's the final look. I want to go ahead, give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you all, you saw behind the scenes, you already know everything that went down. So the only thing I have to tell you about is A, whether I recommend this palette, palette, <laughs> product, or B, about the longevity, because that's something you all didn't get to see. So first off, do I recommend this foundation? Yes, this foundation is absolutely beautiful. You see, although we started off, everything was nice radiant, I have a technique where no matter what kind of foundation I'm wearing, I do not want her to look flat and dry. I know I have oily, acne prone skin, but I like a glow to my face too. And baby, they said this foundation is radiant and look at the way she is giving a glow on camera. This is 4K, you all walked with me as I applied it, as I showed you the shade match and everything. So first off, pros. The price. I believe this foundation retails for either $22 or $23. I understand for the average drugstore, many people still expect things to be about $10. But to me, how can I put it? I don't consider Juvia's Place to be drugstore. I consider them to just be more affordable. And the fact that I'm able to get not only a full ounce of foundation, but right now, I'm not sure if this is something they're going to keep doing or if it's just a launch promotion. But when you buy the bottle, it has a sticker right here on the front that says 30% bonus, 40 milliliters for the price of 30 milliliters. The average size of a foundation is about 30 milliliters. So to know you're going to get that extra 10, it's extra product. So I'm getting extra product. I'm getting a price that I don't think is too bad because my most repurchased foundation of all time is the NARS Share Glow. So for her to be in the $40 range, I figure I'm getting a bottle that's half the price so I can get twice as much product. It's good. Another pro to me is the coverage. I personally find as if for me, because I'm a man who has the five o'clock shadow that I like to have covered, I like full coverage. To me, she doesn't take you all the way to full coverage, but she's such a high medium coverage that I don't think most people would know this. Um, I want to see if you can get a view of this up close and in person because you see, my five o'clock shadow is not 100% gone. If you were sitting right here in my face, that would be something you would be able to notice. But sitting here, conversation view, walking past somebody, who's gonna care that much? When you look at this and you see, all you see overall is your skin looks amazing. And every time I've worn this, even when I wore over the top dramatic eye looks, everybody wanted to know what foundation are you wearing? The thing is, for con, I, I'm gonna keep it honest with y'all. Although I love Juvia's Place, I got all the foundations, I got all the eyeshadow palettes. I'm gonna show love to them, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. The main con that I had is one, the smell. The smell of this foundation is strong, 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 honey. 
scents usually do not bother me. I've been wearing it all week and it has not caused any irritation or any sensitivity so far. But the thing with scents is they can take time to show up. And with time, you can develop a sensitivity to certain products, which is why I personally, usually for makeup, usually for skincare, usually for even just hygienic products, I prefer things that are scent free. I pay too much for my Chanel perfume to have you compete with her. My laundry soap, my face soap, my dish soap, I like everything to be unscented so that when I go in and put the perfumes I want on top, you do not compete. And the thing is, there is nothing you're going to ever be able to do to not smell this. Once you get her on the face a few hours down the line, you may not smell her, but I promise you, you use your foundation brush today and you sit her to the side and you come back the next day, she going to smell like this foundation. You come back to her in a week, she will smell like it. It's not until you actually wash this brush that that smell is going to dissipate. And I'm not sure why they added it because she is strong, 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 like watermelon non later strong. And if you're not good on scents or if you just feel as if you're not even willing to risk it, you're, you feel as if it's going to cause irritation or an acne breakout, don't do it. The only other con I personally see that I can have for it is trying to get a shade match. When you, when they first launched it, they didn't have any shade descriptions. They just threw them out there, you grab it, and it was just that. And this is why this is the third bottle of it that I've tried out because first I had 515, which I thought was my shade. She was way too light, but everybody kept telling me, oh, how beautiful she looked, how nice she looked. I'm like, she looks way too bright to the point she's unrealistic. Like on camera with filters and things like that, she was cute, but there was, I would have never went to a wedding or to an event like that where I knew people were taking pictures and my skin looked at that bright because to me it looked like I was trying to get attention with being that bright. With 430, I can make her work. She was beautiful, but she reminded me of my old school MAC days of foundations just being a little too yellow. Everybody liked that too, but I kept telling myself, Torrance, on camera, you feel like you're wearing a mask because you can see where your neckline starts and stops. With this shade here, 435 Punta Cana, I know this my shade. She's fabulous, and so once you figure out your liquid shade or the powder shade, it's easy to correlate from them because in Ulta, they do have the, you know, the freestanding little thing. I can't remember what it's called, but once I realized 435 was my shade, they had the powder sitting right there on the side of it. So if you all want a tutorial with the powder foundation, I wear the shade Cameroon and from now on I'm going to make sure I start listing my Juvia's Place foundation because in all tutorials I usually try to leave that there on the description bar but I didn't know what shade I was so I never wanted to get that but I know Cameroon for this, Punta Cana for this and I also have the original and Punta Cana. I think I also got shade 450 because I bounced back and forth so I'm not sure which one of those is it but because 450 is looking good now I think we're going to keep that there. This eye primer, she looking good, baby. I had absolutely no issues. She built, she blends, she gave me a fabulous look. And honestly, to me, this blends into my complexion a little better than my MAC Pink Pot. I ain't gonna lie, but it's about the longevity of this. So if you were to ask me, Torrance, do you recommend this uh, foundation? I'm gonna say yes. The thing is, I would recommend you picking her up in Ulta instead of online because if you do not get the right shade, like I said, it took me three times and I consider myself to be somebody who's really knowledgeable on makeup. I've known a lot of other people who said the same thing, like they had to go through several shades to find just the right one. Get her at Ulta, that way you can exchange her, you can return her if you don't like her. Oh, the last thing I forgot to tell you about, the main reason why it took so long to get this one up. The longevity, everybody wants to know about that. I have oily skin, I bake, so of course baking is gonna give you just a little more time with the foundation. The thing is, as an oily skin girl, I would say she's beautiful. You can look at her until she's giving. The thing is, I'm not 100% sure this is the foundation I will wear outside in the summertime. Will she make it through a work day? Yes. Eight hours, she gives me no issues. The thing is, 
being oily, I start to notice my oil slightly starting to peek through and break down right here on the sides of the nose around the four hour mark. Every time it's been like that, at the four hour mark, I usually have to decide for myself, Torrance, do you want to powder down and continue to wear her? Or do you just want to say screw it and let her be? But the beautiful thing about it is, as your oils start to come through, I feel as if this foundation looks a little more skin-like, a little more natural. But I think if you were someone to accidentally, let's say at the six to eight hour mark, take a tissue and blow your nose, you may notice that you're starting to get things to lift off. But the rest of the face, I think she's gonna be just fine. It's just your oily areas will need to be touched up within that four to eight hour mark, or you're not gonna get much more than eight hours after that. If you're somebody who has dry skin, I think you're gonna absolutely love this foundation. The coverage is beautiful. The color is beautiful. She looked fabulous and I just, <laughs> I don't know what else to say besides, cause baby y'all know, I'm not used to re, uh, viewing foundations. So it's not that I'm not comfortable with talking about foundations. It's just, I'm used to doing different things and talking about eyeshadow. So that's what my brain keep doing. It's telling me about this. So I'm like, Today, not about the eyeshadow. If y'all want to see the Julius Place Coffee Shop, check out that palette there. Also, because you know, you all love Julius Place, I'm going to make sure I keep them coming. Let me know if you all still want to see the powder foundation. I'll try to get that up. Um, but I'm also going to try to make sure I get up the candy shop up next. I need to get up and record this tomorrow. I've been had her, but because other stuff has been coming up, I've been trying to get that out. But I will do a tutorial with the coffee shop next. I did not want to do her today because I wanted to make sure I got a close-up view of swatches and things. And I like to try, if I can, to get a close-up view before their swatch so you can see the imprints and things. So check out for her on Saturday. Don't forget, I will also be trying to get things going up next week because I still have that Makeup by Mario foundation that I have not tested out. So if this works out, I'll be able to get that up for you all and then I can have that as a shape reference as well. But it's time to go ahead and end this because I want to make sure I get pictures, I get close up of the foundation because that's the one thing I did not do before we got started was give you a close up view of what the bottle looks like. I think I may still have the box so I may be able to show that too. But we've been talking long enough. I need to get off this camera. I need to figure out how I'm going to edit this. Um, so I hope you all truly did enjoy today's tutorial. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, please, 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 for my homegirl, Janessa J. Champagne, this video should be going up for her birthday. Once again, I want to say, hey, girl, happy birthday. Make sure you turn up and have fun. If you all would please leave me a comment down below telling Janessa J. happy birthday. I'm not sure if she's going to make the live chat considering it's her birthday. I don't expect her to stop and try to come in and watch my video. I hope she considers herself the center of the universe on that day and she goes out and turn up. But please, please, please leave her a happy birthday because she's a dear and beautiful friend, honey. And Janessa, girl, check your DMs because I'm going to make sure I tell you about what happened. I know y'all going to be like, how are you going to tell Janessa what happened? You say you can't tell. She's another influencer, honey. So it's certain things that we get to share with each other to try to help each other build their channels. So I want to give her about a tip that I learned from mine. And... I think we're just going to end this off here because, baby, I want to make sure I give you all a sneak peek of this look on Snapchat today. So with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye, YouTube.